Hello everyone, and in this old video here, done by Inside Edition while Ron Logan was still alive, they interviewed Ron Logan and they asked him to repeat the words, guys down the hill. And he did just that for them. No one, I don't, uh, I don't recognize the voice at all. Stephen asked Ron Logan to repeat those same chilling words. Listen. Down the hill. Down the hill. The newly now, no offense to anybody, but if you think that those are the same two voices, I don't know what you're listening to, honestly. I know I've made another Ron Logan video before, but if you take a look earlier in the video here, they have video of Ron just kind of traipsing about here, and I want everybody to take a look. This is a very, very short clip, but just take a look at how slowly and it's almost like it's painful for him to walk. But watch watch Ron Logan walk here. Focus of attention from day one. Inside Edition Stephen Fabian interviewed him in 2017. That is a 72-year-old man that has trouble clearly walking. Now, we only have a certain amount of video from the bridge. And honestly... We're constantly told by YouTubers, by all kinds of people, that the person who was crossing the Monon High Bridge did so very, very quickly. That is, if that person even came from that direction originally. I mean, we could speculate all day long where he was waiting, where he walked across, but the general accepted theory is that he crossed from the north side of the bridge to the south side of the bridge. So you're going to tell me that this 72-year-old man who uh, looks like he's having trouble walking in this video is going to cross this 854 or so foot bridge, 853 feet, 60 feet off the ground in February in broad daylight, then go down a giant 45 degree embankment across the private drive chase girls down another huge steep drop off across the creek up a huge steep embankment on the other side stage the bodies go home dispose of the evidence travel to lafayette which is where he want to in the afternoon and get away with murder i uh, i just had no part of my brain can fathom that being the reality of the situation, especially given some of the things we know. Furthermore, now Ron Logan, he owned a horse. And in that Inside Edition video, uh, he's petting the horse and, you know, being real calm around it and things like that. And granted, somebody could be very calm and also be a murderer. But you're going to tell me that this, this guy who uh, has this pet horse, takes care of him, feeds him, etc., is just going to be a brutal double child murderer all of a sudden at age 72. And I want to show you some numbers here that kind of back up what I'm saying. It says number of murder offenders in the United States in 2020 by age. And then, you know, you've got hardly anybody under 13 at all. Uh, then it starts climbing rapidly when you get into the teenage years. And it peaks at age 20 to 24. And then it slowly and incrementally after age 24 at least for 2020 goes back down until so you get to Logan's group and you could see that there's just not many murders that are committed by people in his age group. Again, that's not to say that that couldn't be the case. Um, the other thing is this guy, before the police even interviewed him, he asked his friend for an alibi for him that day because he knew that he was on pro uh, probation and it would have been a, a probation violation or a parole violation. And that's what ended up happening. Uh, they found out he was driving when he wasn't supposed to be, and then they put him in prison or jail. Now, you mean to tell me that some guy who's smart enough to try and get an alibi before the police even interview him, he's going to have the presence of mind to do that, but he's going to be stupid enough to kill two girls in broad daylight on his own property doesn't make any sense. 
Here's a guy who was afraid of going to jail for a probation violation, folks, okay? If he's afraid of that, you don't think he's going to be afraid of killing two kids? Come on now. Anyway, that's my video for the day. I, I just get tired of seeing all these Ron Logan did it videos. But I will say this before I go. In my last video, I did talk about how uh, the source that I had, who was in prison with Kagan Klein, stated that he alleged that Keegan told him that Tony Klein, his dad, was really, really good friends for a long time with Ron Logan. So, again, I'm not saying that Ron Logan couldn't have helped Tony out, allegedly, or, you know, I could, I'm not saying any of those things are impossible, but I'm saying that they're not very likely at all. Just, again, this is a guy that was just living out his last years, probably minding his own business, and uh, just, as he stated before he went to trial, uh, you know, hopefully next time there won't be uh, two girls that are killed on my property. So, again, this had to have been somebody, I think, that knew the area and knew Ron Logan's land well. Uh, do with that information and thought what you will. Let me know what you think in the comments.